six European nations are finally taking the fight to the United States, Russia, and China by developing sixth generation fighters that could sweep the world's most powerful nations for a long, long time. In this video, we'll look at the two European sixth generation programs that are backed by billions of dollars, tens of powerful corporations, and six different governments. And that's not all for the current top dogs to be worried about, as news out of Europe is that these two separate programs might soon come together and join forces to become one massive, indomitable establishment. The late 2010s saw France, Germany, and Spain team up to form the FACS alliance, while the United Kingdom, Italy, and Sweden constituted a team known simply as Team Tempest. These two programs have similar sixth generation goals and some resemblance in timelines. The twin-like nature of the two programs, along with some other factors, has resulted in talks proposing that both FCAS and Tempest programs combine to become a joint program aiming at the same goal. General Luca Goretti, the chief of the Italian Air Force, is a strong advocate for this merger, citing possible limitations in resources across Europe to sustain two leading next-generation combat aircraft programs, especially seeing as the programs are run by corporations that typically require huge inflow of cash to bring revolutionary concepts to life. Some of these companies are British multinational arms, security, and aerospace companies. BAE Systems, British engine manufacturer Rolls-Royce, the British Royal Air Force, Italian defense contractor Leonardo, the European Missile Consortium, MBDA, Germany's Airbus, Dassault Aviation of France, Inja from Spain, and many other high-tech companies across multiple borders. This, however, isn't the first time that the motion to combine both programs is being brought forward. German Air Chief Lieutenant General Ingo Gerhardt's had previously talked with his British and Italian counterparts in support of the idea. But seeing as Britain is the lead member in this team and they're somewhat lukewarm towards it, the merger still has some convincing to do. Tempest and FCAS are currently preparing for the next phase of development, which is to research and develop a full-scale prototype. And the German parliament has already pledged over $5 billion in this regard for the FCAS. So there's not much time left for other top members of either program to make a decision concerning joining forces. For now though, we can only see these programs as separate and compare the features of each to determine which would have a taller podium on the world stage. The Future Combat Air System FCAS, is commonly referred to as a system of systems, and for understandable reasons. The FCAS will cost $4.25 billion in its next development phase alone to get it that much closer to its introduction into service in the 2040s. The sixth generation program is developed with a manned, unmanned team at its heart, which has so far proven to be the most efficient strategic setup any military could have. The manned next generation fighter, NGF, would be the centerpiece of the program and through it, the unmanned remote carriers operate just as swiftly as if they were manned. The NGF, via the 6th generation cross-platform and cross-domain collaboration systems, also under development in the FCAS program, gathers a ton of battlefield information and shares this information securely and in real time to unmanned aircraft convoys, forces on land, maritime forces, space-based allies, and the Joint Force Air component. This level of integration across the fleet comes with a long line of perks. Friendlies are kept abreast of the most likely successful operational strategies, making it less tasking for every unit of the fleet to gain access into highly denied environments. And this seamless force multiplying integration includes older generation aircraft just as much as their sixth generation counterparts, putting in action the Eurofighter Typhoon, Dassault Rafale, Eurodrone, C-295, A-400M, Smart MRTT, and a line of other aircraft operated by Allied forces. The FCAS uses its fluid transfer of information to improve the efficiency of warfare analytics, making them more reliable on the field of play. And should the unlikely occurrence of a strategic misstep ever occur, the FCAS also reduces the impact of such errors, seeing as its fleet of unmanned aircraft will significantly cut down the risk of casualties. The FCAS recognizes that human-machine collaborations could always be better no matter how good it currently is and as a result, maintains an upgradable open information system without trading off any of its Fort Knox level cybersecurity. 
Since 2018, multiple tests have been carried out on the FCAS program to assess its effectiveness in single and double mission group operations. These tests include flight formations, ground control station involvements, support systems, scenario determining processes, mission tasking, assistance, contingency, and group leader decisions. There are also plans in the works for the FCAS to take on multi-mission group operations, made possible by the most advanced GPS navigation systems. This comes particularly handy in denied environments where the opposition attempts to jam signals and hinder comms, which are some electronic warfare capabilities also available on the FCAS. As a general overview, it's easy to see the development of the FCAS is mainly centered around next-level manned-unmanned teaming, where unmanned aircraft with supporting roles are agile and dynamic enough to even switch between missions to wherever their set of skills are most required. This seemingly simple concept is the seed of a smart network that forms a genuine system of systems. But on the other side of the continent is Tempest, marching its way to the top spot of the metallic 6th generation food chain in ingenious ways. Tempest is under development in the UK by the coalition of the UK, Italy, and Sweden, and they've managed to assemble a team of renowned corporations to bring their 6th generation program to life. Tempest is expected to enter into service in 2035, replacing Europe's current top-of-the-line fighter, the Eurofighter Typhoon. $2.2 billion has been pledged from the Italian government for the project, while the British government is projected to spend $2.6 billion on the program by 2025, with more funds coming in subsequent years. Not much is known about Sweden's financial subscription and its impact on the program just yet. Tempest, like virtually all 6th generation development programs, revolves around a fighter aircraft that's all capable, with the ability to concurrently conduct surveillance, reconnaissance, electronic warfare, command, and control tasks. Tempest's fighter, therefore, fits the profile like a glove, thanks to its long line of advancements from a futuristic airframe to a frightening array of weapons. Tempest's airframe has a flexible, software-driven, next-generation flight control system that adapts with ease to rapid changes in the operator or environmental and situational conditions. Its physical architecture appeals to scalable autonomy that supports manned, unmanned, and optionally manned modes of operation. This flexibility is further amplified by changeable software and hardware, from fuel tanks to weapons and even sensors, sensors that draw a Picasso-level quality of the battlefield while allowing the aircraft to stay out of view from threats. And when in view, Tempest would make quite the scene. It will be powered by a thrust vectoring adaptive cycle engine developed by Rolls-Royce. This engine offers the Tempest fighter unrivaled maneuverability capabilities at subsonic, supersonic, and transonic speeds. And that's not all. This efficient propulsion system allows for a high thrust-to-power ratio that results in greater range and more electrical power distributed across the multiple high-tech systems throughout the aircraft. And with thermal signatures being in constant opposition to stealth, the fighter's engine has a thermal management system that prioritizes the reduction of the aircraft's thermal signature while in action. Pilot care is another priority for the aircraft while in action. In the cockpit are gesture controls and eye-tracking measures designed to manage the pilot's workload and identify mental stress or fatigue. The pilot is further pampered with reconfigurable communication systems that allows for a complete overview of the entire battle space and seamless communication with friendlies via a secure, resilient communications combat cloud network that spans across land, sea, air, and space. However, the fighter's primary method of perceiving the battle space remains its suite of sensors, not its communication with members of the fleet. The fighter features advanced integrated sensors that ensure the right information is received in real time for quick educated decisions to be made. And should the decisions require an unprecedented level of brute, the fighter is more than up to the task. It is equipped with kinetic weapons such as hypersonic missiles and swarming unmanned secondary aircraft, and non-kinetic weapons such as electronic warfare jamming systems and laser-directed energy weapons. These weapons are integrated with the fighter's sensors, so they can be assisted by artificial intelligence and machine learning, a critical advantage over time. One advantage of this fighter's level of weapon versatility is that it gives room for flexible payload bays that allow the aircraft to facilitate improved weapon loadouts, while retaining low observability even at supersonic speeds. 
In terms of defense, the Tempest fighter boasts of novel technologies that provide a defensive aid system capable of tracking, targeting, and intercepting incoming missiles. One subscription that is sure to have a lasting impact, though, is yours when you subscribe to this channel. So kindly exercise your finger by smashing the red subscribe button, the bell icon next to it, and the like button just under this video. They all help with the YouTube algorithm. What do you think about these two European 6th generation programs? Should they team up or remain rivals? Share your opinion in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.